Punker Mike, welcome to Punks for Progress Weekly What the Fuck Report. It's my partner, Aaron. What's up, dude? Hey, bro. Um, I have excellent news for the world. That's not excellent at all. <laughs> no. Um, uh, Donald Trump will not be impeached. That's my declaration for the world. And that's the premise of my tone for tonight's weekly What the Fuck oh. Report is, uh, um, wake up. Get Chances a kick, are, boy. dude ain't being impeached. Okay. Chances so, are? I mean. Chances are? No. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with someone, this one. Like, who, who are they waiting for to come along and impeach this guy? Like, all the people that are benefiting from what well, he does? Well, in the you con- gotta get, in come on, bro, you gotta get, you gotta get Ryan, you gotta get Turtlehead Mitch McConnell, uh, and uh, you got to get fucking dumbass Ted Cruz. You're going to have to get little Marco Rubio. You got to get all these all these Republicans on board. And the problem is, they need him to sign their right wing Republican legislative bullshit. Right? He will. Yep. They and we know because there's two bipartisan bills right now in Congress. Well, and before we get to those. Before we get to those, oh yeah, to state clearly, Michael and I have said numerous times on our show that he would probably be impeached. We were fucking wrong. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be impeached. No, um, I, there's a better chance that he'll resign. Um, there's at that what is it, twenty fifth amendment? That ain't going to happen. You've got to have two thirds of the cabinet. That's ten out of twelve of his assigned cabinet turn on him. Fuck, that ain't going to happen. And, and they're talking about dominoes and like look at look at his attitude about Jeff Sessions. Look at the way he's going at Jeff Sessions. Sessions you know? Jeff Sessions. Dun, dun, dun. Anyway, um, dun, 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 dun. Why do you want to you know, Jeff Sessions? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the quagmire of Jeff Sessions. Okay, so let's see. Trump has been tweeting about how um, beleaguered Jeff Sessions is that because he won't fire Mueller. 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 Um, anyway, he won't because he won't fire Mueller because Mueller's getting close to finding out the connections between Trump and, and the Russian oligarchs and the money and so forth. So, um, so he's pissed off. He keeps tweeting on on uh, you know calling out Sessions and and hopefully trying to get him to quit. But the problem is, see, Sessions ain't going to quit. They're they're too hard headed. They're bumping heads, right? And if he fires him, if Trump fires Sessions, then he gets Rosenstein. Rosenstein. That's the guy that hired Mueller to start with, so yeah. he ain't going to fire him. I've been hearing about Ted Cruz and uh, and uh, Rudy Giuliani being thrown around. Well, Those they're throwing, out. and I I saw an interview with 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 Giuliani, and he's like, "I'm not doing it. There's no fucking way." Trump betrayed. <laughs> he's already betrayed him. I don't think yeah, I don't think Giuliani's going Giuliani back. Head. But the yeah. problem is, until he assigns somebody, he gets an intern. He can also assign an interim, I guess. But I, they don't. I, they, that doesn't seem like that's going to happen either. Well, well, here's the thing, bro. Here's the thing. It's like it doesn't matter who he gets but, or who he fires. All of these people, but, they're still into the same agenda. And just because there's divisions between them, um, it's not any sign of well, like, here's, Trump right. on the ver- Let me finish, bro. It's not any sign of Trump being on the verge of a downfall because he has divisions with Sessions. Like Sessions and him still want the same thing i think the reason he doesn't like sessions if you'll allow me to tinfoil for a second is um that um the whole recusal thing and i don't think that he's mad at sessions for recusal because um it makes trump look bad or because it 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 opened it up for anything with the investigation i think and here's where my, my tinfoil comes in i think that trump doesn't like jeff sessions on the recusal thing because that's a sign of Jeff Sessions sort of being weak. It's a, it's a, it's sort of a, um, a, a stepping back. It's a, ooh, I, I don't want this fight. So he didn't take on the fight. So he's weak. And I think that that's really why Donald Trump. Everything Donald Trump does, or and, and the things that motivate him, have to be 
you know, sought back to their bare root level. And it's always a very simplistic thing. And it just makes more sense to me. It's the reason he doesn't like Sessions. I don't think Donald Trump understands the implications of what Jeff Sessions is testifying about. Honestly, I think he doesn't like him because he does. I don't think I don't think Donald Trump even understands what recusal really is. I don't care how many people he sued. I'll give you that. However, here's the thing. And and I don't necessarily agree with all that. Of course, it, you did say it was tinfoil. Um, and, and I guess that's what most of this is, is just our s- speculation, right? Um, I think he is – I I agree. I don't think he's happy that he recused himself uh, of the, of the um, Russia investigation. But I think that he's – like I said, Mueller's getting close to finding out what the fuck's really going on. And that scares the shit out of Trump. And it is simple. Trump is extremely simple-minded. I heard somebody um, today say that – they knew somebody that worked with him and said that he can't focus for more than two or three minutes at a time without without squirreling like you know yours truly. Um, the th- problem is, and see, and here's the deal, is that's why I called it a quagmire. Is Jeff Sessions Sessions is actually implementing the things that he wanted to implement, the things that he wanted to do. Sessions is doing it. They're 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 arresting more undocumented people. Way then, more than the than yeah, the like, fucking deporter in chief yeah. ever did. They're cracking down on on medical on mar- not on, just on medical marijuana, but on legal marijuana in the states. Sessions is going after that. There's a number of things. That's just the two that I can think of off the top of my head. But Sessions is he's the one that's in charge of doing this, and he's doing it. He's actually doing his fucking job. As much as I hate him and his job that he's doing, right, 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 he's right. actually doing it. He's gone into that department and changed it around and started doing the things that Trump had said he was going to do. And Sessions is actually doing it. I have. I just think it's the Russian thing. Um, I, I would really like to see him out. I don't want to be on his side. Don't make me root for Jeff Sessions. Don't make <laughs> me root for John McCain. I want his right, right. I, I want his measly little beleaguered ass yeah, out of there. There's no love for any of these people. Oh They're my all, goodness they, gracious. So let me say this. They all have the same singular agenda. But it's all about kind of understanding uh. the nuance of their relationships with each other. They all want to like serve their fucking fascist masters. They are all a bunch of fucking bigots. Well, they're and they, corporate and masters. they're all about oppressing fucking poor people and stealing fucking. They don't care about poor people. Right. But let's talk. Let's talk and about the things about... that the Congress does agree on. Right. Because all of this shit that we're talking about is a fucking dog and pony show, bro. In the end, the fascist agenda fucking rolls on. Unabated, while we argue and about... And Sessions is the one and, that's implementing it. Right. But, but Donald Trump doesn't like him. Well, what, let's talk about those bipartisan bills we mentioned. Man. Right. We had one passed last week, I believe. Um, and it had something to do with Israel and protesting is protesting them, if I'm not mistaken. Well, bipartisan. Let's let's be clear. That means Democrats and, and Republicans, yeah. both of them. Okay. So it's not bipartisan, two parties. Trump right. Okay. So there's a couple of things. So there was this <laughs> a bipartisan support of broad sweeping sanctions on like on three different nations. And each Do you want to talk about each, that one first or do you want to talk yeah, about the one with Israel? That first, because, oh, uh, that's right. It's it's staggering the implications for each individual country. Like, I mean, we can't, this was today's. we can't spend a whole lot of time on it because what the fuck do I know about the broad implications of calling for sanctions, bipartisan support for sanctions on, on uh, Iran, Russia, and North Korea? How is well, that let's, one? Let's, let's talk that about one? them. It, well, first of all, let me say this, bro. It's, it's very reminiscent of um, – uh, Bush Jr.'s, um, what did he fucking call it? His triumvirate of evil, or his axis of evil. That you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And axis powers, and like, why do we have a bar, a bipartisan bill in Congress calling for sanctions against these three nations in particular? I don't Iran, know necessarily why it's bipartisan. I, I ran. I think. Here, well, let me say one more thing real quick, and then I'll let you go, bro. I promise. Um, I. I um, but Trump was um, forced to relent and admit this week that Iran is um, complying with all. Yeah, that was a good one, wasn't it? The Iran deal. <laughs> so why, why? So why are Democrats on board with sanctions against Iran? 
I don't understand. I'm this not really sure. I, and and I don't. This is omnibus. You're right. I don't, well, it's, this is broad and sweeping. And, and it was not just, well, and here's the deal. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just Iran. It was also North Korea. Right. Now, was that because North Korea's, you know, shooting off uh, warheads towards Japan and Hawaii? I'm not really sure. I don't know the implications of it. I don't know exactly what's in it. I, I do know that the White House supported the sanctions against Iran and North Korea. Now, like you said, you know, Cittolini's been out there uh, spouting um, the, this, uh, the Iran nuclear deal and how horrible it was. And then yet had to admit this week, begrudgingly, that they're com- that they've they're committed to it, that they're compliant. They're compliant. That Iran and, is compliant. Right. Yeah. So, however you feel but about you're the still going to sanction the, the them. Big, the big, the big, the big fucking cry from the right throughout the whole thing with Obama, and you know how I feel about Obama. He's a fucking tyrant, capitalist piece Obama. of shit. I have no love for him at all. Um, but. Uh, the whole argument against the Iran deal from the right was, oh, you guys really, you libtards, you really think Iran's going to comply. Um, you're yeah, they you're did. living in a dreamland. You're living in, it's going to be nuclear winter. And fucking McCain, Captain fucking Toomer from the hospital to kill millions of people, was one of the fucking people going bomb, 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 bomb Iran. And I'm parroting this bullshit yeah, yeah, yeah. He that likes Iran would never comply. So why are Democrats not freaking the fuck out that there is a fucking a bill calling for sanctions against Iran right now? Why are okay, they well, maybe you and your right wing agenda. We were right. Our guy Obama was right. Well, why let's are, throw this in there. The maybe because it has something to do with the sanctions against Russia, because the Democrats, I'm sure, believe that Russia should be sanctioned for interfering in the 2016 election. So. There's now so sanctions tear that, against so we Russia. Gotta tear that apart. We got to break that shit down because what does that do? Why are the Democrats so obsessed with fucking Russia? Because why? It, it, it's their excuse for putting up the failed candidate Hillary Clinton for what they did to Bernie Sanders, and uh, it's it's a distraction from the fact that they're just as equally sold out to the same goddamn fucking lobbyists and special interests and Wall Street and bankers and corporations that the Republicans are. I believe and there was actually interference, have, though, with from have, Russia, though. I don't believe that was the... They have, I, that they have, dude, they have effectively tricked the mass amount of, of liberals into believing that there is, like, smoke to the fire of Russia... And they're waiting for like impeachment to come down because of Russia, and so they'll they'll get on board with this bill because it well, bolsters what they know to be a lie, and it bolsters uh, keeping this false image of why they lost the election alive. So it's all selfish bullshit. Well, and okay, now and they're supporting Russian sanctions. I don't know. I don't know of those reasons other than to bolster the lie that it was Russia's fault that they put up Hillary Clinton as a failed candidate who was sold out to all these different goddamn corporations. You said that. And, and, and because they fucked over Bernie Sanders and sold and handed the election to Donald Trump. Okay, yeah. So, I, and see, and I don't totally agree with that. I think there was collusion with Russia. I think Russia did steal the fucking emails. However, I think that our votes were stolen too. Bro, I know. I hang on. Collusion. Russia hacked and got information. All Russia did, if they did, is prove what uh, John Podesta and Hillary and and um, uh, Debbie Washington. Right. That there's did. bullshit going on. I so get it. Okay. Collusion. But now hang on. But now hang on. Uh, there's that's part of it and i i i my problem is let's not just focus on one fucking part of it that's not the reason that trump is the president there's a number of them yes hillary was a horrible fucking candidate she ran a horrible fucking candidacy she okay um there was help from the russians on the other side there was help from um uh, interstate cross check and the number the millions of people that were thrown off the voter rolls there was a number of things they're continuing to do it they have to their agenda is extremely can unpopular can i stop you real quick mike so that you can tell people where they can learn more about interstate <laughs> cross check could you please greg palast
follow Greg Palast. He's got a documentary, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. Check it yeah. out. It's on Netflix. <laughs> Check out Greg right. Palast. Go look at it. It's going on right now. The dickhead that that organized this, um, uh, 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 I, can't, I just had his name in the fucking, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. Cup check or something. That's not it. But anyway, the dude that's, that did the interstate cross check is the one that uh, is now in charge of this fucking... You no, know, he's the one that's in charge of the voter integrity committee now that they that they've and that sent out the um the, they wanted all the information on all the voters. They want our social, part of our social security number, our name, address, and phone number, what who we voted for, and all this other bullshit. Kobach, Chris Kobach. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that dude. Anyway, so they're still it's trying very, to they're still trying to do this because. Their agenda is so fucking unpopular. Now, I'm not sure exactly why. I would like to know which Democrats are the ones that voted onto this. But the other reason, and I, I wanted to get back to this Russia thing and, and, and the sanctions, is the Senate did put in, as part of the sanctions against Russia, that the president and the White House or the executive branch, and this is specifically to the Russian Federation, cannot touch the sanctions without congressional approval. So... If Trump has ties to Russian oligarchs because he owes them money, and I swear to God he owes them money, um, if if he has ties to them, he can't just say, "Well, we're not going to we're not going to do these sanctions. We're not going to enforce these sanctions." He can't do that. Congress is going to fucking no, you can't. We're in charge. I think that pisses him off. He's not used to having checks and balances. He's used to being the boss. That's his fucking brand. He's the boss. He tells people what to do. I, I mean, I, we didn't put this in well, the list so they, of stuff we need to talk yes. about, but, and we need it's to move on. But He's a business, he's a business owner, and a, a business. A horrible business owner. In America, under capitalism, is a dictatorship. So all, all these idiots who have been talking about, we need a good businessman to run America, what you're asking for is a dictatorship, because every business is a dictatorship. The person who owns the business has the absolute last say in Everything. You're right. You You're absolutely right. That's absolutely right. From your business, and owner, let me like see, Aaron, whatever. But they're a fucking dictator. Period. How long has he been? How long has he been the owner of his own company? Since he was Baron's age, yeah. so he's been a dictator his entire life. That's all he knows how to do. Yeah, we need a good businessman, right? The country. So, anyway, so that may be another reason. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I was just going to say that may be another reason that that um, that some of the Democrats signed on. I don't know who they were. Now, last week there was a Senate bill that was had bipartisan support, and this one, and we posted on we posted on the, uh, about this on our page because I was fucking livid when I found out about it. it. There's a few articles on our Facebook page about it that are really good articles, and just go cruise through them and look for them because this this is terrifying to me, man. Right? And no it's shit. Even about surface shit it's not even really about israel why it's terrifying but i mean okay so go ahead mike explain what the fucking bill is okay so there's a bill out there that says they don't want anybody to well you're gonna have to help me break it down it's about divesting in in israel because right. uh, because well, what, because they're it's, occupying Palestinian territory, they're walking over into another fucking country or another fucking territory and saying we're going to live here. We're building homes, and that's exactly what they're doing. And now they're shutting off the electricity. These people are fucking dying because they don't have electricity. It's it's a horrible horrible situation, and they've they've taken already taken over so much of their land in the name of religion or or whatever the fuck it is, right? So. Um, People here in 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 this country, me for instance, oppose that. But now there's this there's this bipartisan bill out there that says if I talk about it, mention it, or look for information for it, I could be fined up to a well, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, and thrown and in jail for. It's a felony, and you could do time. So yeah, here that'd be fine. I think it's two years in jail and a hundred thousand dollar fine for just asking about. And it's divestment, it's DVP or something like that. There's I can't. Divestment. I, I, okay, so let me break it down. But it's just okay. not. It's it's more than that. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, Aaron. So what it is is okay. For for starters, this is a bill that was written by APAC, which is the largest yes, yes. Uh, pros real yes. lobby in the United States. Thank you. And has had long bipartisan support forever and ever. If um, not to the point where um, a lot of um, anti-Semitic shit bags. 
would assert that APAC runs our country and the Jews. Easy run there, it. Turbo. That's ridiculous. That's nonsense. But they do have a hell of a lot of power, and they do have a hell of a lot of sway and a lot of money to throw around up on the hill. So they do have a lot of power. And obviously, it's no secret that the United States um, gives pretty much unfettered and unquestioned um, support to Israel in anything and everything. And so uh, we provide them with um, their entire arsenal of, like, jet fighters. And, oh, 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 we have to give them the best of the best. Right. And so, and I remember billions, that fucking convention. Billions and billions and billions of dollars that we've given to them since the inception of Israel after World War II. And continue to give them. Continue to grow that budget. And any questioning of that from either uh, – administration on the right or the left is just seen as massively anti-semitic and like um like uh, so what the, what this is a call for is any um what this law states is that any demonstration in favor of divestment american divestment from israel would be a felony so for anyone and I'm calling for it. It's not a felony yet, but I'm going to fucking commit that felony. Good. Because if this becomes a felony, I will Dude, still that's call for fucking man. I think there's conditions to it. I'm I looking, have a constitutional I, I, goddamn right to say, uh, call for divestment from Israel. Why does this have bi bipartisan support? Because it's... It's about dismantling our right to protest. There's a massive, massive campaign against our Agreed. right to demonstrate and protest Absolutely all across agreed. this country. And that's what this is. And if you question this bill, you're an anti-Semite. It's perfect. It's perfect for Republicans and Democrats to take away our right to demonstrate because if you stand against this bill, what, you're against Israel? Because if you're against Israel, you're an anti-Semite. Ignore all the uh, traditional Hasidic Jews, the hundreds of thousands of them all over the country who are not in support of what Israel's uh, of Israel's expansion. And I stand in solidarity with every one of you who stand against them. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not religious, and I just and, what they're what they're doing is just bullshit started. for whatever reason. Right. So it has nothing to do with any of that, but. That's why it's so perfect. That's why this has bipartisan support. Not because of Israel. Not because of support of Israel or anything about Israel. Because you can't stand against this law because then you're an anti-Semite. And it gives them the precedence they need to take away our right to stand up and practice our First Amendment right to free speech. If they can take away our right to stand up against the divestment, U.S. divestment, if we have, if, if they take away our right to stand up for divestment from Israel, then they have the right to take away our right to free speech on anything. Well, it's, it'll, 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 be one, it'll just be one and, at a time, bro. Trump doesn't like, Trump, Trump tweeted about Jeff Sessions. He's having a little frickin' You know, girly oh, junior high spat with Jeff Sessions. Really, that's important. Well, no, it's it's the other things he tweets about that distract because you know there's shit going on this week in nepotism. We got fucking Kushner. God, all these names, right? Kushner had his Senate hearings. I'm ask for I'm gonna ask for using the girly analogy. Got to check my language sometimes, and I apologize to anyone who heard that. That was out of line, and. Um, I was raised under the same piece of shit, misogynist culture you all were. For me to use girly as a um, as a uh, um, derogatory reference was out of line, and I apologize. So anyway, go ahead, Mike. Well, thank you for that. But, you know... It, <laughs> what was I saying? This week in nepotism, Kushner had his Senate hearings, and he just basically said, oh, I didn't... I didn't talk to anybody from Russia. I didn't know anybody in the campaign that talked to anyone from Russia. But then, you know, then we got Manafort has his, had his today. Do you well, know let's that? Talk about healthcare. Let's talk about health care. Well, is that, well that we should talk about health care. We should talk about that, Manafort, too. Yeah, we definitely should. Right. Because yeah. that was all going on today. 
while Trump was tweeting other horrible so what was it? shit. They, they, they decided that we can go forward and debate whether or not um, we kill 21 million Americans or not. Is that what, what happened today? Oh, my God. Okay, wait a minute. Wait right? a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. BDS. First of all, let's go back to what you were just talking about, the, that I, that uh, 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 Israel thing. It's BDS. It's it's uh, a boycott, divest, and um, all right, what's the S for? Sanction. That's what it stands for. It's the BDS I stand, movement. And I literally stand for all three of those things, not be, even because of this law. Like, I agree with those things. And it's called the Israeli Anti-Boycott Act. With it. And with it. it. It talks about boy and it targets boycott, divest, and sanctions BDS, and that's and what I have a star of and David you can't, tattooed right. on my elbow. I have a star of David tattooed on my elbow. Um, a, a fine of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars with a maximum punishment of twenty years in prison and a fine of a million dollars. How do you like that for coming out and 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 just asking for information about it? Not making that happen. No. Just to the street with a sign and saying, it says, I, I don't, I disagree. I, yeah, I support that idea of uh, uh, boycott, divestment, and sanction. You can be put in prison and find a million dollars for that. Bipartisan if bill, the widespread Democrats support. And the Republicans pass this bill. While you think that you know something because you saw tweets from Donald Trump about Jeff Sessions. Right. Okay. You know? So. So let's go back to healthcare. Now that now that we've got that done, that's what I was. Yeah, BDS. Okay. So healthcare. Yeah. So this was going on today while Trump was tweeting his vile, ignorant bullshit. Um, yesterday. Oh God. Okay. So we've already we already know that the damn healthcare bills can't pass. They do not have support. First of all, they're only twelve percent popular among the among the population. Twelve percent support among the population. People in the country don't like it. They don't like their, what they're. They like what they have, basically. Um, so they can't get enough Senate support. They can't get enough Senate support on. Well, they didn't. Even, they still have the House bill, but then the, the senators went out and wrote two more bills, and none of them. They couldn't get either of those passed. So now they have decided that they want to discuss some of these bills, and they were struggling to get enough votes to discuss it because you've got to vote on well. Can we can we put it out there and start talking about them and maybe start making amendments to these things and start working on them because everything was done in closed door sessions. So they still needed 51 votes in order to get this discussion passed, and they had McCain have an eyeball surgery and finding out he's got a brain tumor out, and then yeah. they've got they've got um, Collins from Maine. Susan Collins. Susan Collins from Maine. She is she does, such a trip. She is such a trip. She is a trip, isn't she? I saw her she on Vice News, bro. She's a. She has to be an alien, dude. She has to be. She is she like, one of them? Is she David one of those Icke. reptilian? David Icke. Look yeah, into no. Susan Collins. <laughs> David Icke, please look into Susan Collins because I'm. I think she might be. A she's lady. a tripper, but she's not down for this at all. And and I guess her main reason is because it defunds Planned Parenthood for a year. And she's like the people in her. I guess in her state. Don't want that at all. They're they're she not down for that. Care about women. I I, I don't know. They women they I, and you know because she like is one. Well, no, 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 ease up because every once in a while something might actually hit home to them. I mean, come on now. Even what was Bush's uh, vice pre- vice president? What's the Cheney? Dick fucking Cheney hated gay people until his daughter became one, and then all of a sudden he changed his fucking mind. So. Life. Nice to him? No, 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 no. I'm just saying. Let, I like to give them at least a little bit of the, a little, maybe a little bit benefit of the doubt that maybe she does actually care because it affects her because she's a woman. Whatever. I'll she doesn't want. Apart. Listen, or I'll maybe she's apart afraid. Maybe she's seconds. afraid of losing her job, bro, because she's getting big fucking um, healthy uh, 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 kickbacks from huge corporations because she's funding other bills that they want to get yeah, through. It's all selfish bullshit. That ultimately, I, I agree. No, for, it is. For, is and I'll give you that. Off. But in so, either way, or, she's voting. Or, ag- or, she's voting against it because of Planned Parenthood. So now they've only. So she's out. They don't want. And and all the dem. Every single one of the Democrats is out. So I got to give it to them for that. So that's forty nine. That's fifty. Okay. Um, so what did they do? They had Pence come in. Well, first of all, they had to ship. McCain got on a goddamn airplane and flew in there 
with stitches over his eyeball and voted yes, which gave them 50 to 50, and then Pence threw the, the tiebreaker to, to go ahead with discussion. But I guess after McCain said yes, then he went on his tirade, and, and it, was, it was mostly um, co- coherent, you know, for, you know, better than some of them I've heard. But um, he, he went off about how the bill sucked, and he was not going to support it the way it stand, the way it stood, and that it was bullshit because it was, it was uh, drafted behind closed doors, is what he said. And, and, and he's like, and now it should be, you know, go ahead and put your amendments on it, and let's actually work on something, and, and, and then we'll vote on it. But I'm not voting on it. I am not a yes vote the way it stands. So I'm like, don't make me fucking like him. I don't like him, and I don't want to cheer for him. Um, and but that was just bullshit for one to, to have him fucking fly all the way out there to vote. So they, okay, so now they're going to discuss this. That's bill. why he said it, Michael. That's why he said all that shit. So someone would go, don't make me like you. Fuck him. <sighs> Fuck him. He deserved to fucking die. He came back to fucking Ooh. Washington to sign a bill to kill 21 million people. Ah, just to discuss Fuck it. Him, man. Just to discuss it. He eats out his entire brain and he falls over on a fucking curb and dies. Fuck John McCain. He sold out veterans for fucking decades, man. I agree. He sells himself on on this fucking reputation of what was true. Okay. Anyway. fucking moment. I know. No, it was. What is that supposed to. No, it was just to judge. Sorry. I just got grossed out by any, any concession. Well, it was to justify him. Horrible scumbag. People have died because of him. Straight up. He's got blood on his hands. Fuck him. Okay, you done? He's so much better off when he's gone. Okay, are you done? Are we there? Okay, oh, good. No, but I'll let you talk now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it was you're right. It was him justifying voting for the voting yes to the discussion. So apparently what the what what they decided to do, and this I'm talking about the Senate now. Senate decided to go ahead and vote on the House bill. You know, the first one that went through the House that was only going to kill 32 million people, right? right? So they voted, on, they voted on that one. That one died big time, and that happened yesterday. So I'm a triple, you know, d- you know, DECA when it comes to murder. Jeez. So know, then today, yeah, today they all got together and they discussed it again, and then apparently they voted on a repeal bill just to fucking repeal the ACA just dump it and get rid of it and throw everybody off their fucking health insurance that one died big time too so here's the here's where we're at now the the talk now is called skinny repeal okay and what that what they're talking about doing that is that's going to repeal the mandate and it's going to repeal a few other things but it's still going to throw 20 some odd million people off of their health insurance just if they do the skinny repeal so but that looks like the next thing they're going to vote on, right. because they don't it. have they don't have a bill, bro. They don't have anything that's worth anything. That's why. That's why. And I we can we can segue from this. I don't know how. Um, we need to push for single payer. This is the time. Single payer has sixty percent approval in the country. Sixty percent of the people in this country want single payer. That's what we need to push for. And me in California is what I'm pushing for. California Senate Bill five sixty two. I mean, I'd ultimately House like there to not House be bill. any money involved in the process whatsoever. Any but, money? Why do we want any money involved in the process? <laughs> but, I'm but kidding. single-payer single is a massive leap forward for humanity. I mean, it really is. It's not the end, but God damn, it's worth fighting for. I'm, it, I'm definitely, it definitely is worth fighting for, so... So that's what we have going on there. But now, while all this is going on, we had... Fucking Cheetolini on on the on the tweeter this morning, on the toilet and on the tweeter apparently, and decides that now transgender people can't can't be in the uh, military service, which is interesting because let me throw something out there. Can I throw this out there? Please. Did you did you know, my brother? Did you know that the U.S. military is the largest employer of trans people? I did, did not know. Yep, the military is the number one employer of trans people. So, if you're the number one employer now, trans Patriots. people can't work for Patriots you. Patriots who, who every last one of them go out and kill people. Well, volunteered their service to America, 
and he's telling them, nah. I don't Go out want and kill people for your fucking selfish ass corporate fascist needs. You have recruited these people, and now they don't matter. They I thought I thought all lives mattered. I thought all lives mattered. They volunteered. They volunteered. There's, that's what's supposed to be the greatest of American right. heroes, right? Right, alt right, right with your American flags and your Trump flags. Isn't that what's supposed to be fucking the the greatest display of American patriotism? Because they're going to cause because they're a burden office and join up, but they're they're not good enough to do it. You fucking bigot scumbags. Because their junk isn't what you think it should be? What the fuck is wrong with people, bro? There should be... It doesn't have anything to do with junk. Junk is... is I mean, sex is... and ge- Sex is one thing. Gender is something else. And I... That, it's a message I, to people and say, Look, it does, it doesn't, It's none of your is, fucking business. Look, is, is, it's none of your damn business. Table. Scapegoating is on the table. We're, you know, sca- it's open season on fucking scapegoating and bigotry of all forms. That's I thought I thought he was going to be. A when what did he tweeted a year ago? Did you see that a year ago he tweeted he was going to be, you know, the the the, the leader of the, the LGBT community while Hillary Clinton was going to be, uh, you know, screwing you on health care or whatever it was. I can't remember right. the so exact let me break tweet. I can look it up. That's but... exploiting the LGBTQ community. Of course, that's what he was doing in a positive way. And now when he can exploit them to their detriment and possible murder. Well, let's... Because, when you, because when you say this, when you say we don't LGBTQ people or specifically transgender, that's what he said. It was but transgender. When you say transgender because they cost too much money. Not allowed in the military. You're telling the American people that they're not good enough to be Americans and you're giving people license to go out and brutalize other fucking people. And that's exactly what fascists have been doing. Since the inception of fascism at the end of feudalism, when capitalists realized they could take over the fucking world with their greed. See what you did? You pissed off the fucking anarchists now, goddammit. Well, it's just, what the hell is wrong with people? It's not, Donald Trump doesn't it, it, care Adam, Aaron, about that's transgender the, that's people. The, he doesn't care about LGBTQ either way. Donald Trump is totally fine with people being LGBT. I want to know. I want to. I want to care, but he's okay with scapegoating anybody he can to serve this fucking fascist oppressive agenda. I, I want to know something. Precedence. Go for it. Okay. Apparently, we've got a bunch of new followers, correct? Yes. And apparently, we have some trolls, correct? Yes. Okay. Explain this to me. Explain this to me. How do you fucking? Just like he said, these are heroes. These are your people. These are your people out fighting your wars in the military, carrying the American flag. These are your people. The number one employer of trans people. They're going to get fired? They're going to lose their jobs? You're okay with that? No, it doesn't matter because it doesn't affect you until it fucking affects you. Once you find out that you want somebody in your family's transgender, then and, then and only then. Maybe that you'll change your mind. I and I just know. want to throw out there, too. Uh, I, dude, I just, I just, uh, what I wanna, irritates me is how foul, thing. hang hang on, oh, how foul, how foul a fucking thing to do just to distract us from the fact that your fucked up finances with Russia are coming to light. You want to steal health care from 20 to 30 million people. That's all and you're gonna and you're gonna attack these people fascism that served our country, my fucking country, that stood up for my rights to call you a fucking asshole. Those people, I mean, right? Isn't that the isn't that the theory? That's they went and fought for my right to, right? Scapegoating. It's what fascists do, man. So talk to me. How does how how do you justify this? I want to know how you right how how yeah how the right can justify that because they hate them. The That's military what. is freaking out. What I heard today, the military, and it's not just, it's not, it's not mainly the um, enlisted, it's the officers and it's leadership. They're fucking pissed. And they're going to the higher ups going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. This ain't happening. We're pissed and we're standing behind these enlisted people, whoever the fuck they are, whoever they are. We don't know who they are. You don't know who they are. 
You have no idea. You have no fucking idea. Michael, it sounds reminiscent of his uh, speech to the Boy Scouts. Oh, my God. Fucking well. Oh, my God. You know, Aaron, either. There was just so much stuff there that we could talk about. We could do a whole fucking show just on his Boy Scout speech and break down the fucking vileness that he spoke in that speech. The things he said. He praised them for voting for him. They're not even 18. He told them these rambling stories about this guy that was ugly. And he went to a party with the beautiful people. And he was so sad because this guy was ugly. And he was his friend. To Boy Scout kids. Who are, and that's know, just that's just a, that's just scratching the surface, man. It's like I said, we could do a whole show on it, but, but, but it's just it was it so up, vile. Michael, 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 the reason I brought it up is because a shit ton of fucking like Eagle Scouts and troop leaders and parents and Boy Scouts and rank and file all Flipped through out. the different levels of scouting have fucking come back and going, what the fuck, dude. What the fuck is wrong with Flip you? The Literally fuck out. everything you said was totally contrary to the core tenets of scouting. And you insulted Barack Obama. An a Eagle Scout. Scout. An Eagle Scout. So And Boy right. Scouts Boy Scouts is in their bylaws nonpartisan. Right. He and as many all times all as he got up there and said he was not going to talk about <laughs> politics, he did nothing but he doesn't know anything. Right. Impressionable Horrible. children who Horrible. will never be in front of a president again. And yet, and, so, and yet, the moment they were, they took in. He he poisoned minds. Well, like Socrates, he poisoned minds for for evil. And you've seen the comparisons to Hitler's youth, right? Jesus, how can you not? <laughs> you know. However, however. They still need him to sign their fucking health care bill if they can get it through the Senate. They still need him to sign off on their fucking tax reform so they can give tax cuts to the upper class. To the 1% of the 1%. Fucking Obama wasn't going to sign it. Trump will sign it because it's partisan. It's going to make him look good. That's why he's not going to get impeached. They fucking need him in there. He's so effective. He's so effective. And the the mass of the left is watching Senate hearings and, and, and hating on Putin all day long. Well, and, and that's fine. But don't just focus on that. Don't be right. – you got there's so much more going on. And, I, I mean, I see little things in the news. Hey, you know what? And, you know, and I, try to, I try to retweet them. And maybe this is a good time to, to point this out that – I'm mostly the one doing the Twitter feed. Aaron's mostly the one doing the Facebook feed. I do put stuff on Facebook as well, but Aaron does not usually post on Twitter at all. And for the most part, he's the one on tw- on Facebook. So you want to get a hold of Aaron, you want you post, get, hit him on Facebook. You want to hit me on something where I'm talking about, hit me on the Twitter. But um, what was I going to? What were we talking about? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> you were, the things that you were sharing on Twitter that had to do with, uh, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's all about scapegoating, bro. That's what we were talking about. The scapegoating of, of transgender people and, 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 and ultimately, you know, what, there's this whole agenda going on. And it's a singular agenda. And, and we're, we're talking about the sort of uh, executive branch of that agenda, but there's a street agenda too, and there's a lot going on. We've talked already about um, legislation, sweeping legislation across the country about taking away our, uh, the way right to protest. Away our right to demonstrate. But right. let's talk about um, them empowering cops and shit. Well, let's we talk just, about. Uh, well, yeah, well, cop we, in Minnesota. What's going on? We got yeah, yeah. we got we had some good news today. I guess if you want to look at it like that. Um, so apparently starting on Saturday now, all the policemen in Minnesota have to have their body cameras turned on on every call and everything that's instigated there that, that they have to instigate or something like that. Their body cameras have to be on. And this starts on Saturday. And my thought was, why the fuck hasn't that 
Why wasn't that started before? Why wasn't this the theory from the beginning? Why do you have body cameras if you can turn them on and off whenever the fuck you feel why, like it? Why, why should the cop have any control? What happened that? right after that? Right yeah. after that well, young Aussie well, lady was shot? This. That let cop, they, they showed that cop hiding fucking drugs. And, and he didn't realize that the camera came on 30 seconds after you turn it on. Like you well, turn it on and it records 30 seconds before you turn it on. So it showed him planting the fucking drugs. Totally showed him. And you know what? They walked. They still walk. They all walk. And, and, and no, here's the thing. The technology Homicide. exists. I mean, Never listen, we, no we saddle up fucking uh, convicts and ex-convicts and shit with this technology all the time. They could turn a camera on you from remote no, at, in, in an instant second, 30 Hello? seconds delay. Fuck off. The, that's what these cops need to be wearing. Is fucking videos that they don't have control of, that a people's fucking watch group is in control of. Aaron, answer me a and question. When you when you, you did, worked in the restaurant, this did, Minnesota did, law, these fucking cops, they can turn that fucking camera off anytime. Oh, malfunction. Oh, I forgot to. God damn. What? We're gonna convict them for not turning the camera on? We don't convict them for shooting people in the back. It's a placated fucking. It's a placation. It's a fucking. Okay, bullshit. so here's what I don't understand. It's okay like to surveil us. Redlands now wants to buy a drone. Six, they want to spend six thousand dollars and buy a drone because it's cheaper than having a helicopter fly over situations that they need, you know. And I'm like, spend the six thousand dollars on body cams for the cops. Why is it okay for them to surveil us, but it's not okay for us to surveil them? It's okay for you to be surveilled when you're at work. It's okay for me to be surveilled when I'm at work. When I do when I do the uh, apartment pool, they've got surveillance around there, and I know I'm on camera. Right. And, and it's not I, just that, me; they're not looking earlier. for me. No, you're right. That was your question earlier. When I worked in the restaurant, damn right, there's cameras all throughout that fucking restaurant. I liked my bosses the last restaurant I worked at, and I wasn't worried about them looking at me in their pleasant dictatorship. But, right? No, I had a, I worked for a lady that definitely did that. She would pay her teenage daughter to sit there and watch fucking hours of video to see if she could find us doing something wrong. Or, you know, basically stealing liquor. Yeah, yeah. why, you know, the cops just knew. That was what it was. But so why is it okay? Why is that not okay for us to surveil you? And you get to turn that motherfucker off anytime you want? No, 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 no. That thing needs to be connected to, like, the mayor's office or somebody that... That only you know you know what I'm saying? No, a people's group. It needs to be a bipartisan. Yeah, no, not bipartisan. Just a straight up fucking from the community. Like you know what? The APTP group down in Oakland needs to be in charge of turning on those fucking cameras for the Oakland PT. That's the the anti police terror watch group in fucking Oakland. That's who, and we'll get back to them. But that's who needs to be in charge. Oh, of we don't camera. have to get back to him. Get on to him right now. Well, no, we'll get to it because I want to talk about it more. But we have some other things to talk about. But um, okay, what else do we have to talk about? That's who should be in charge. Not you know that's another thing that's a problem. You know that Jank Jank talks about a lot that like um that <clears throat> the 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 oversight. Like, so, okay, so a cop commits a crime, and it's within his own jurisdiction and precinct where the investigation is going to be done by people he works with every day, you know? And, and so he ta- he calls for federal oversight and whatever. Fuck that. I think the people should be in charge because there are – we pay them. That would be socialism. Their bosses. No, we pay them. They work for us. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was taught. So we're the ones who when they roll up on me, I'm like, hey, motherfucker, I'm the one paying your check, and you're treating me like a, like I'm the criminal? I had an asshole cop tell me once that the, I don't pay his um, bills because I don't own a house. It's like, wow, that's incredibly telling about what fucking the nature of your fucking job, dude. So you don't work for me because I don't own a house. So in other words, I'm not a rich white fucking you know, property. Owner. What the fuck does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Because he was breaking down the way where taxes come from and blah, blah, blah in the community. I mean, it was a canard and it was bullshit. But it, to me, I took it very different than he sent it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. No. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, but, you know, it, yeah, it's just I just don't have any faith in that law. I mean, that's a great step forward, and I support the implementation of that law that it calls for them to have cameras. Why I just hasn't it happened? It's going to be because we have this full-on agenda. It's a police state. A militarization of the police. We live in a fascist state. We have a militarized police state. This is what we live in. And 
you know, so I, uh, I've been going to meetings with the anti uh, APTP, which is the anti police terror project based in Oakland. And, um, you know, actually, I, w- I want to back up a little bit before I, 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 I you know, we, we've talked before on the show about how the inception of, of the police department to begin with was, um, you know, to round up um, escaped slaves and, and that kind of stuff. And I, I, I also think it's very interesting and in telling that the first act that um, the SWAT team, the first ever SWAT action of the first ever formed SWAT team um, was to viciously attack a chapter of the Black Panthers in L.A. and put them out of business. That's- Aaron, cops were, the cops were started, I mean, to patrol – um, uh, slaves from getting away. That's well, were, were you not paying attention because I just said that about four seconds. Ago. Oh, sorry. You're right. I was talking to Brian. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I premised it with that, and to say, and then okay. look, and so that's the inception of the police department to begin with, and then think about the first step in militarizing our police, which is SWAT. Yes. Right. It's right. First, its first official action was to um, shut down the LA chapter of the Black Panthers. Who were just trying to organize their community and protect themselves. And for anybody who wants to call fucking Black Panthers fucking terrorists and blah, 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 I want to see the hundreds of thousands of pictures of the people that the Black Panthers have fucking lynched and fucking destroyed and, and, and hung and they were protectors led on of their fire. Community. They were protecting yeah. their community. Straight up. Straight You're up. never going to have those pictures, you alt right douches. You're never going to have the pictures <laughs> show me of terrorism Ooh. from the Black Panthers. They protected their fucking communities. And a lot of them were murdered for it. All their leadership were murdered for it. And the SWAT, SWAT was invented to suppress the Black Panthers, not to protect you. You know, and, and, and you know. Um, That's uh, why white Edgar, people were so afraid of them. That's right. And J. Edgar Hoover came out and he said that the Black Panthers were the uh, single greatest threat to the American way of life. And people for uh, decades oh, have laughed, laughed at that. People Jay have Edgar laughed Hoover, at that. The transvestite? And that's what you, well, but let me, let, me, let me finish this because people laugh at it because they think what? Um, that the Panthers are a, a major threat to the American way of life? What are you talking about? Well, one of the cornerstone things that the Panthers were calling for was the end of capitalism. And the Panthers uh, understood that the way you end capitalism is you don't try to get rid of the top of the power. You organize it in your own communities. That's what anarcho-syndicalism is about. It's about organizing your own community. And J. Edgar Hoover knew that the successes they were having in doing that, and they were coalition building, they were reaching out to other minority groups, they were reaching out to white people. It was like, you white people better know you better shut the fuck up when you come and help us and let us talk first, right? as it should be, but they were reaching out to them and sending out the olive branches, and they were organizing amongst themselves in their own communities to build something better for themselves, not against anything, just to protect themselves and to have um, prosperity and the love of their communities and their friends and their families. And J. Edgar Hoover understood that that was a very, very dangerous threat to what America is built on. So it gets down to what is America built on? It's built on capitalism. It's built on the oppression well, yeah, of others. Exactly. It's it's it was established to protect the interest yeah, of kills very me how people rich people embrace it so much. Yes, exactly. They've been sold on this lie. They've been sold well, on this lie, Michael. Well, that think they about this. A fucking chance at it. That they might get a chance to be a part of it. And it's a fucking lie. Think and about this, And occasionally they let people. Occasionally they let people be a part of it. And, and you know, like if a Bill Gates, lucky. like a Bill Gates or someone like that gets to get entry uh, into uh, the club, or, or a Barack Obama gets entry into the club, and it gives the illusion that the rest of us might have a chance to. We don't. And, and that's all I had to say. You go ahead, Dan. Yeah, because I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. Well, thank you for letting me finish. I appreciate it. But, you know, it comes back to – so I, I really do want to push this anti-police terror project. They, they meet uh, every month in Oakland, and um, they're, they're training people how to um, 
how to um, properly oh, assess a crime scene. So not to interfere with cops, not to ever do anything illegal or put yourself in any danger of arrest or anything, you know, uh, irresponsible like that. But how to properly assess a crime scene, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, you because we're talking about, you know, crime scenes where cops are murdering people, innocent people and unarmed. And if there's not someone there to properly record what happened, that cop's going to get away with it. Even and, if they uh, do record it, the cops get away with it. Right. But if we can train our citizens and the people on the street how to properly record what's going on and we can get our recording of it and our side of it from the community and from the people to be a louder and more prominent and consistent reporting and sort of, you know, message, you know, maybe we have a chance. Oh, maybe. But, then again, maybe have, what maybe happened? We have a chance at, at saving maybe one or two people now and again, man. Then again, what happened? What happened was it yesterday when they threw? Yeah, they were. They had. I, I believe it was in the Senate House, and they were going to vote on it. And people came in and they started chanting, "Don't kill me, kill the bill." Don't, don't, yeah, don't kill me, kill the bill, or something like that. And the cops had to escort them out of the Senate chamber, and they made them, they made the media and everybody that took cell phone video give it up. You post, we posted about it on our page. Yeah, I think you did. Yep. So there's that. Let me tell you what I was going to say. You were talking about capitalism and then the country was founded and how it was built and stuff. Think about this. Think about this. Okay. White people came over here, took over this country on the on the uh, on the phrase that I learned um, in high school: "Manifest destiny." How they can just come here, you know, it was our destiny that we were going to just take over this land from indigenous brown people. And how did we build this country? What was the industrial age built on? I don't know the bla- the backs of even browner people. That's what this country was. That's how it was founded. We took, we came over here, and it was white, white, white oppression. We oppressed, um, we oppressed indigenous people and took people from another country and enslaved them to build this country. It's horrible. And we're still enslaving, and in greater numbers than we no, did we, when we now, were enslaved. Now we are enslaved. With this whole, I mean, I have to get up every day and go to work. I'm enslaved because I have to pay for things that a human being needs in order to live. I have to pay for food. I have to have food to live. I have to pay for water. You have. To, we have running water here. I have to pay to you know for. Every, I mean for well, shelter. Me, I'm mean, just me, saying these you. are let things a human needs as well as health care, no, which I can't you. afford. I need to stop you. It's okay. I'd be okay even someone who hates capitalism. I would be okay with paying for all those things, and I know that Mike would be too. But why does some other fucking asshole have to profit from it? Well, that's why I started my own business. And if they don't get to profit off it, I don't get to have it, and I can starve and die? Because people are all over the planet because of that. Oh, don't get me started. You know? Just saw a whole thing. And and listen, when I talked about how – there are more people enslaved now than there were people enslaved that built our country. That's real. There's more people sitting in, in prison, more African-American people sitting in prison now than there were slaves during legalized yeah. slavery. Check this and out, they bro. they are slaves, and they are Absolutely. slaves, bro, because the 13th Amendment fucking makes it so. Yeah, it's absolutely. Gross. Yeah, no, that's it. No, you're right. Yeah, that's after the 13th Amendment. I, ab- you're absolutely right. Check this out. I, w- I saw this thing the other day. I uh, saw this story that the economy in Japan, Tokyo in particular, is, is, is in the dumps right now. It's taken a pretty major hit. And um, they have a very, very large, um, I, I, I guess you'd call them baby boomers, or we would call them baby boomers, but an older generation. They're el- they have a very large population of elderly people. These people cannot afford to live. They're living on two thousand dollar pensions, but it costs them three thousand on average to live. So you know what they do? They fucking shoplift, and the rate of shoplifting has gone up dramatically. And they were talking to this one lady, and she was saying, "Here's the conundrum: if they 
shoplift and get away with it, then they get all the stuff that they shoplift so that now they can live a little bit longer. If they get caught shoplifting, they go to jail, they get they get they live in an air conditioning building and they get three meals a day and they get and they have community. They have other people there that are and they were talking about how many of the elderly people are in in prison right now and how they they were showing them sitting around doing stuff and you know but it's this sense of community and and what she was trying to say is if there was a stronger sense of community and maybe the government could help build you know or do something to help build more of a sense of community with with the you know these older people that maybe then they wouldn't go out and and I don't know and the guy, no, see, one of the guys I'm they with, talked to. I'm with you all the way till the end. I'm with you all the way till the I, end. I'm just saying what, what she said, was saying, well, but here, but here, okay. So uh, maybe not you. I'm with her or whoever, all the way till the end when they're saying, and then maybe the government can come and blah blah blah. Well, that's where you lose it. No, you did great. Just be a community and let's all fucking rise up in our communities and look out for each other and just protect each other and let's build these services for them and quit waiting for this fucking fascist asshole Trump or anybody under his administration or any of these liberals in, in Washington to come along and do anything for us because they haven't done shit for any of us for decades except oppress us and lock us up in fucking prisons and shit and murder a bunch of people all over the world and push fracking. Why are we waiting for any of these people to do anything for us? Why are we waiting for impeachment? Go out and, and, and meet the people in your community. You know, go join a fucking union. I'm in the IWW. And I've met some pretty lazy, fucking righteous to... cats up in the fucking IWW. What's Jeez. up to my fellow workers, man? <laughs> Motivated people who care about people. It's easier Going to sit to on your ass and talk shit on Facebook. Right. And, 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 you know, people who do more than, you know, bitch to their best friend on a podcast like we do. They, you know, that's it's why a I hang out with A little bit them. more. Because... Because they're giving a shit about their community and trying to get out and, and affect actual change and not waiting for some government to come and fix it for you. You know, and there's a lot of people, man, millions of fucking people locked up right now for stupid fucking bullshit. Nonviolent crimes. And, had their and fucking now I wait. And now and every member of their family is locked in that fucking cell with them. And now Everyone we've gotten that loves them, cares them up. Michael, I fucking sat in the joint. You were with me the whole fucking time, bro. You yeah. suffered. Well, you and, fucking, and man, look at it. I got put on hold because I was locked up up in there, man. And all, all these people's families are just destroyed and devastating. Then when they get out, they don't have a fucking shit or a chance to put anything together for themselves. Because they got to put an F. They got to mark that fucking box on an application. Why? Because there's fucking companies, man. There's fucking companies like the Geo Group and Core Civic. This is what I was trying to say. Uh, We've already Trump was or Trump Obama was trying to scale those back, and he actually had a thing that said no more private federal prisons. And of course, as soon as Trump got in there, he rolled that back. Obama went Sessions, fucking toured prison and said a speech. Sessions is trying to hang on. Sessions is trying to fill these for-profit prisons that's what this is when it's for profit then it becomes everything's for profit you've got to fill the beds and how, how do you fill the beds you you put non-violent offenders you make a bullshit reasons to imprison people right and on top of that what else does it do you talk about the 13th amendment but it also takes away their right to vote yep and it also, and then, and now, and, and one more, and one more way out, to they're saddled to that reputation. And chances are, dude, there's like sixty-five percent recidivism rates for armed robbery, and for theft. The people, the reason people do, yeah, that I wonder if the economy was no better, option. people wouldn't have to steal, right? They have no option, so they do some bullshit, stupid fucking thing to get food or drugs or whatever the fuck it is they need, and they end up in prison. But when they get out of prison, they're in a worse place than they were before they fucking took up that gun and shot somebody. So guess what? They end up back in prison. And Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump and all these fucking fascist assholes love it because they're fucking private company. They're private industry fucking 
prison industry company buddies make shit tons of cash. Dude, in Nevada State and Legislature this year, there was like 15 laws, all written by a fucking private fucking prison industry company. They wanted to privatize parole and probation, bro. They wanted oh to make God. the parole and probation department it's about the money, Lebowski. a profit-making industry. And the only reason that, that law did, these laws didn't pass is because the action, it, it was not because of any fucking good-natured fucking inspiration on part of the Democrats and in, in, uh, the majority in the Nevada legislature. It was because the, uh, uh, the right-wing um, dude who presented this whole bank of like 10, 15 laws – um, it wants to become the um, attorney general, and the liberals don't like him. So they blocked his laws because they knew if he got these laws passed, it would help him build a reputation and he'd have a better – so it was all this bipartisan personal bullshit. But these 15 laws are, gonna, are on the docket for the next – they weren't passed down. They weren't shot down. That's going to be in the next ne Nevada state legislature. And the, the most terrifying of all of it is privatizing parole and probation because that makes it a profit industry. So you need more people. Gee, that sounds like capitalism. Disgusting. And, and, and I just want to reiterate one more time. I don't give a fuck what people did to get in prison. It does nothing to deter them from ever doing it again. It does nothing to fucking rehabilitate anybody it doesn't deter anyone else from committing any type of crime and it destroys families it doesn't just punish the prisoner anyone who loves that prisoner or cares about them their life is fucked and this sunday i'm gonna go and i'm gonna fucking go to mosswood park in oakland and I'm going to uh, – to the Abolition and Community Defense Social in the Park. And I'm going to stand with the Black Women's Defense League and the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Community, the IWOP. Well, bring and then some after videos. That, well, and then after that, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to be there, and I'll bring a report back. But I don't know if I'm going to video people. I don't know what this atmosphere is, and I don't want to make a all bunch right, of fucking right. stuff like people who have been through a hell of a lot of shit you feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, totally. I, and, and after that, I'm going to go over to uh, the Grassroots House in Berkeley, and I'm going to send out a few books to prisoners through the Prisoners Literature Project. Well, that sounds real good. That's the things I'm going to do, you know? And it's like, really, you want to get on fucking line and, and, you know, troll shit and attack fucking sites and leftist things, you alt-right idiots? Like, what are you doing to actually help anybody? Why do you provoke these guys? I don't know. I'm, I'm fascinated by him, man. I can't help but fucking talk to him. Like, wh what is going on in your they head? They think we're you gay think, and this. communists. <laughs> what, is it that, what is going on in your I head? I love it. Getting on our shit and insulting us, like, does anything. I think I can sound gayer if I tried. Well, I mean, I engage them not because I'm, like, offended by their insults, but, like, I really want to understand what the fuck are you getting out of this? You know, I just – because It's fun. It's fun. It's fun to – it's you say this, bro. I get a lot more satisfaction out of doing something where I know if I stand up for this, someone might, might suffer a little less. That's the kind of shit that motivates me. I it's don't, I fun to trigger snowflakes. Well, I, but I don't know – Why? Why is that fun? Why would you? Why I don't know. would you fun? Why to do make people some... like to go shoot guns at targets? That's different. Why? Why it's different, bro? Why would someone derive pleasure from making someone else upset? I don't get that. I just don't get because that. Because they have justified and righteous in doing so. Like, so. Yeah. Bottom line, as well as probably <laughs> themselves, probably lack of intelligence. But there's things you guys you can do. You can actually stand up for other people who are suffering. It's possible. There's all kinds no. of shit. Hit up our Facebook page, man. Stand up for yourself. And, and Don't you know that's that. what the what, that's what the rights about, dude? Pull pull yeah. yourself up on your fucking bootstraps. Do this by yourself. You can, you don't need anybody. Do this by yourself. If you work hard enough, you can do this. You can have the American dream. Don't you know? You don't need anybody's help. Really? Think it the fuck out of my face. Sorry. Or you know what else? And there's other things you can do. You don't have to get out and be an activist. Fucking, you like art, you like whatever. Go create your own.
own fucking scene. Go create music. So, fucking plug some gigs. Bro. There's, plug dude, some fucking, dude, dude some my experience, gigs. come on, those people don't do that. They're so negative. I don't give a it's shit. It's so hateful and so vile. They don't create I, art. They create hate. I, that's what I'm, they do. I'm, I'm because open. they let's feel talk, like shit about themselves. So, yes, let's talk let's about... talk about people who actually do give a shit about themselves and create some shit. <laughs> okay. okay. What do you want to talk about? And a bunch of gigs going on in your neighborhood. One you're oh. doing, but... Uh, Kind of yeah, fucking going on down there in your neighborhood, dude. Punch we, the progress is down in a fucking cool little na- neighborhood of music, dude. We yeah, we got a cool little scene in here in the Inland Empire, man. And um, you know, we're we're not that far from LA, but we got a kind of our own thing going out here. We got these little backyard shows I got turned on to, man. And uh, this you know this scene's kind of cool. I wanted to see what was going on and how the scene was, and if there was one. I haven't found one like directly in San Bernardino, but. You know, some of these little backyard shows are really good. I'm getting to know some of these bands. And like I said, we're we're having a uh, uh, a birthday ball for myself um, here at uh, Punks for Progress in the Inland Empire. And um, it should be a pretty happening little show. Mine's but birthday bash. Birthday ball. Whatever. It's a birthday I'm ball. Wear your, your wear, money ball. Wear your hat. And I'll have my minute. No, wear, no, wear, wear your steampunk hat. <laughs> it's a birthday ball. <laughs> okay. It's a punk rock festival. Anyway, this weekend we've got finally another ska show in the IE. Yeah. And that's going to be in Fontana, and that's on Saturday. And there's a flyer for that on our page. And then also on Saturday, I said Saturday? It's Saturday. Saturday the 29th. Los Punks in Pomona. All right. And we got the Righteous Fags and Hero Injection and Iris Blug. And I can't Megalodon, and it's like two bucks before four, four dollars after four. That one's in Pomona, and then on the August twelfth, we set blasters just having some show someplace, and that's the name of the show actually. Um, Bad Abstract, Set Blasters, Hexes in that one, Spring Tide Solace. All those guys are going to be at my show on the nineteenth. The toilet show? No, I haven't got to that one yet. That's that one show. Oh, okay. That one show. Oh, that's, that's that one show. That's that one show, right. And that's got Baz Rev, Pocket with the Tacos, really good band. Bad Abstract's going to be there. That's another one of my bands, or one of the bands. Foolish Johns, those guys rock. They're also going to be at my show. Uh, my show is on the 19th. Oh, wait, I just better stop you. That's the toilet show. That's and, the toilet show. Baz the Rev's a fucking flyer promotional piece of fucking <laughs> artwork I've ever seen in my life. So to all, whoever fucking put that fucking flyer together with toilet seat shit brilliant i'll Those, have to find out who did that punk rock shit i've seen in days that was fucking badass that was and then there's my show and we've got putrefiers and written pistols we got baz rev um set blaster springtide solace archer o foolish johns and then hexed is going to close the show out for us two stages i've got f- three or four vendors coming uh one selling art one selling jewelry one selling tie-dye t-shirts we're going to live stream um, that shit. We'll see. We'll see what happens. No, um, no. But, yeah, no. so that's uh, that's what's going on in this part of town this weekend. I'm not, I, I, I might want to hit that Scott show in Fontana and check out some of those bands. I you haven't should. seen any of those guys. You, you got you a, a proper Ben Sherman pork pie hat now. I do. Yeah. I do have my, my little porky pie, and I thought maybe I'd put on my, um, my creepers and go check it out, put my dancing shoes on. <laughs> so... We have that happening. Things have um, and, and you'll be hearing more and more about uh, uh, Mike's birthday ball bash. Because <laughs> it's going to be sick, and I'm really stoked about it. It's going to be fun. And um, But we have other videos and shit up. Yes, um, I have one I haven't posted yet. I've got an Archer O video I haven't put up yet, so keep keep your eyes open yeah. for that. Or look, dude, that Archer O video... Either like one of the guys in the band really likes it and watches it regularly, or people are really digging it because we've gotten a lot of views on it. And I would, su- I'm telling you, man. Wow, then I should really Ch- put this one. Archer up. O is sick, dude. I really dig that Archer O song and them in the pool. That is a, they're fucking rad, dude. That's, <laughs> uh, it's, man, there's like real as fuck going on with those guys. I like Archer O a lot, dude. And they have they have other videos on YouTube too. I, I've watched you it out. And, yeah, dude. What's up, Archer? Oh, you guys are sick. Yeah, he follows us on. Yeah, we follow each other on on, on the Twitter. Um, But I will post this. This is uh, a smile and wave is the name of the song. I'll put that up here pretty soon. Um, So thanks for saying that, dude. That was really cool. 
Well, um, Mike's laughing at me, but I'm getting ready to. I, I want to put out a, a Punks for Progress CD sampler, and I already know. I've already talked to uh, my boys from uh, my my home wow. boys and home girl from uh, Loyal Pride out in Wisconsin, and like other people too. And uh, my our L. Play friends would be throwing us a track and like anyway there's some things in the works and uh i really want to do some stuff with, you want to talk about like things in the works oh and um putting out some music by you guys so right i'd like to get baz rev on i think Punk you'll really like oh, them yeah. i do like them that girl can sing like a motherfucker dude <laughs> yeah man there's some good music going down in your neighborhood man i'm really stoked on it i can't yeah. wait to go and actually get to see him on at the cool. show but, so you, but, we've also got some videos. That, well, I was gonna say what else we got in the works is um, look forward to our Ron Dickinson show. We're gonna have a little uh, interview with my buddy Ron Dickinson. He's a friend of ours. We've known him for a number of years, and he's in, been an actor and done some shows. He's actually in a Kid Rock video, and and he's been on uh, Malcolm in the Middle, um, and I'm sure he'll tell us everything that he's had his little cameo roles in. But uh, we're gonna have a little chit chat with Ron Dickinson and play some of his favorite music. Um, that's what's that's what I got. That's what I know is coming up. What do you've got? What do you got coming up? Well, uh, and then let's talk about what we already have up. Oh, I um, well, we're supposed to be. We're still working out getting that interview with Paul McKenzie from the Real McKenzies. And um, oh, I talked to um Alex uh, uh UN, who is the Grand Marshal of Pride. Uh, in San Francisco, and she's agreed to do an interview, so I got to work out the details to get that happening. Uh, but then, yeah, there's some cool stuff in the works, and I've been telling you forever I want to have my buddy Richard Hallsworth on, uh, and uh, uh, Joseph Hallsworth, sorry. Um, and I really do want to have him. He's a, he's a veteran, he's a, a proper fucking activist and uh, author, and he's just a really good dude. And, and we march together, and, and uh, I'm gonna have him on. But anyway, uh, I did do an interview this week that we put up that I'm really stoked on, and it's a little weird and different from your typical Punks for Progress thing, I guess. But um, it's with Doc Phineas Castle, who is uh, the antiquities expert on Punk Stars. But he's also this, like, steampunk guru dude. He's also a 33rd degree mason and uh, an archaeologist, Berkeley professor, um, just – fascinating dude theosophist dude he like uh taught uh was taught received direct lessons from judo krishnamurti and we just talked about steampunk and esoteric things and gnosticism and and art and um you know why fascism sucks because <laughs> he even agrees that fascism sucks what do you know a mason who is against donald trump but anyway uh, the, the 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 conspiracy alt right guys would love that. I, I can't actually, imagine. Who... Yes, I really suggest you alt right dudes watch my interview with uh, a thirty third degree <laughs> mason. <laughs> my goodness! Check it out. Check it out. You conspiracy freaking morons. But all right. Yeah. But that's a. It's just a really great interview, and he's such a neat, interesting, fascinating, fun dude. Like, we talk about this heavy, like, kind of, like, um, dense kind of subject matter, but it's really lighthearted, and his delivery is really, like, comfortable, and, like, it's, it's just a really neat interview. He's such a cool dude. Uh, so check yeah, that out. Yeah, I, I haven't documents. seen it all the way through yet. I started watching it. It's really good. You definitely should check it out. You all right, guys. And then, lastly, um, They're not you know, I've been... Our shit. Uh, the last thing we put up a video, it's on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel, which is the People's History of Anti-Fascism. And what that is, is I want to start compiling stories of, uh, man, a lot of the older punk rockers, you remember like the torment and fucking struggles and fights that we had to go through with fucking Nazi skinheads in the 80s. And um, we won that fight, a, you know, a lot of us. And a lot of us got beat the fuck down and hurt and went through a lot of shit. I got beat up a hell of a lot more than I'd fucking beat anybody up, that's for sure. But um, we won. We won. And people don't know that. People think they remember the Geraldo show, and they remember a couple drive-by shootings, and there was all this craziness, and then Timothy McVeigh blew up the Oklahoma City building, or federal building, and then it all just kind of went away. And people don't understand that there was a real street fight that went on, and 
was successful. And that's why these Nazis like retreated back to their little fucking hovels and their little militia training camps. And I think it's important that people hear those stories and understand what we did right, what we did wrong, what worked and what didn't. And so that's what this um, call to, uh, you know, a people's history of anti-fascism. Let's, and, and, and there, I have a number of people working with me. We have a, a friend uh, from uh, B-Town Antifa who's willing to work with me in editing and compiling a lot of this stuff and getting these stories out to other people so we can learn from them. Because these same people, they're, they're back. And one of the significant things that's different this time around is they got an ally in the White House. They didn't have an ally in the White House last time. Yeah, they, they, yeah Bannon. They hated, the Clintons. they hated the Clintons. And the ATF was against them. The ATF is their fucking friend this time. Alt-right people are helping cops handcuff leftists in the streets. Let's learn from our past experiences. What's up to all my old fucking punk rock and skinhead, you know, comrades out there? I want, I re really, I want to hear your stories. So hit us up on Facebook, and we're going to be starting a. I'm going to start a group page. Uh, sometime this week, to uh, be a place for us to kind of discuss this stuff and talk about it. So that keep an eye out for that on our Facebook page. But that's that's all I got. That's going on with me. Cool. Dude. All right. Yeah. I think we're done. Um. I well. We well, pre pretty close to it. I, I w did want to. Um, I, w I wanted to mention something that you put on our page. Um, I noticed that one of our our good time followers got to meet. Um, what? Uh, Hunter Cohen. What up? Dude, you got to meet Tony. What is dude. up with that? That was so cool. And you know what, man? Dude, it just what's up to the people who follow us. We got some really fucking cool followers, man. We really do. And like, dude, he, he went went out to Warp Tour, caught the adolescence, and because he, you know, had, had been chilling with us and having conversations with us through our fucking social media. He knew we did the interview with Tony, and then he went out and fucking said, hey, Tony, you know our friends from Punks for Progress and shit. And he's like, what's up, Hunter? And took picture. And, and Tony was a badass to him. And, like, so the first thing Tony that Hunter wanted to do was let us know, hey, man, I got to chill with Tony. And we're like, fuck yeah, bro. You know? <laughs> that was tight. It was that, so cool, that was man. super cool. And, 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 uh, and, then, and Tony straight up sent me a, me uh, a message through Facebook private message and said, hey, man, I met a friend of yours when I was like, I don't know, I might have been in Ohio or L.A., I can't remember, but I met a friend of yours. <laughs> you know, he's on tour. Every city looks the fucking same, you know. But yeah, but, yeah he, but he straight up sent us a message to let us know. You know, and that's just, that's the kind of shit we want to see happen with our page. So what's and up what to our see? followers? what did I see? We got uh, 200 more followers or something on Facebook? Yeah, just in the last like, uh, yeah, couple yeah, weeks. Yeah. So welcome all. Welcome all. Whatever. <laughs> Nobody's listening, man. Mike don't give a shit. But, you <laughs> Nobody's know. listening, man. Cousin Go Rhonda don't even show. listen anymore. Because <laughs> uh, 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 we're kooks. I think that's all I get fucking give a fuck to talk about tonight, bro. What the fuck? I love you, man. I love you too, bro. Hey, guys. Thanks. Yeah, so hit us up, subscribe to our shit on YouTube. Right. We have a Facebook page where you can like and share shit and talk to us. And then, and, I, and I'm the, the usually the four. one, and I'll be the one responding and probably calling you names on Facebook. And then, <laughs> and, and then Mike is the one that will uh, deal with you over on the tweet. Mike will be the one ignoring you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> At Punk's the number four progress. All right, bro. Peace out, guys. Right.